Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctish Channel. For decades, aircraft carriers have been an important element in the navies of several nations worldwide. These gigantic vessels consist of a flight deck measuring about 200,000 square feet, packed with military aircraft and dedicated crewmen for various important functions. In such a scenario, the maintenance and precautionary measures on the flight deck is crucial for the aircraft carriers. Consequently, the U.S. Navy has installed special devices, such as sprinklers on its aircraft carrier decks, that have been an integral part of the vessel's safety. In today's feature, alongside the sprinklers on U.S. aircraft carrier decks, let us explore the functioning of a few other interesting maintenance and protective equipment used by large vehicles at sea, as well as on land. Back in 1967, during the Vietnam War, a fire broke out on board the aircraft carrier USS Forrestal. The fire blew the external fuel tank of a parked A-4 Skyhawk aircraft on the port side and developed into a disastrous chain reaction. This incident claimed the lives of many sailors and caused damages of over $72 million on the carrier. When the day was over, we had 134 men laying in a temporary morgue in Hangar Bay 1. To never forget, to never forget what we experienced and to remember our shipments. Thereafter, aircraft carrier designers took steps to ensure maximum protection for the vessel, as well as her people, from such fires. Today, they rig the flight deck not just with dozens of water hose stations, but also with an array of hundreds of sprinklers or flush deck nozzles spread across the entire structure. These countermeasure washdown systems, as they are called, are able to discharge 27,000 gallons of foam or water in a single minute. The foam emitted by countermeasure washdown systems is not only used for fire protection, but also to decontaminate the ship from chemical, biological, or radiological contaminants. You take water directly from beneath the ship, it goes through a series of pipes and up onto nozzles located on the, the weather deck. That way when uh, we go through chemical fallout, biological fallout areas, it washes over the side with the water. The special aqueous film-forming foam, or AFFF, is lighter than flammable liquids like fuel and oil. To convert water into this type of foam, surface tension-reducing substances, or surfactants, are mixed into the water stream. The entire washdown system is divided into zones that can be separately activated from the flight control room and the navigation bridge. Regular fire drills on board an aircraft carrier include discharging AFFF foam onto the flight deck and analyzing the foam's density and composition. On the lower decks of the aircraft carrier, the same AFFF foam is used and is dispensed from vents in the ceiling. When activated, the foam system can cover the deck within minutes, and the cleaning crew can complete the task in minimal time. Besides cleansing the flight deck of the vessel, aircrafts on board the carrier are also clean from time to time.
while cleaning aircraft on an aircraft carrier can be a labor-intensive as well as time-consuming task, a rather advanced form of aircraft cleaning on ground is done through robotic cleaning machinery. The 149th Fighter Wing of the U.S. Navy developed a state-of-the-art technology that relieves maintenance personnel from the tedious tasks of manual cleaning. It takes the flexibility of a robotic arm to reach all the surfaces of an aircraft's complex and delicate geometry. Since the dimensions and shape of every aircraft is different, each type of aircraft requires its own customized programming of the wash cycle. This innovative aircraft washing system not only saves hours for the maintenance personnel, but also results in the increased timely availability of the aircraft for operations. The big advantage of this, and the reason this is a really big deal, is because it gives us more aircraft availability. I'd seen an estimation that it is about 150 sorties per year, which is enough to produce two more pilots in our training cycle. While the robotic cleaning of fighter aircraft is a relatively new concept, automated washing facilities for train cars and trams have been used for a while. Trams do not come in a variety of shapes as fighter jets do. However, they do come with their own complexities. A few are installed with catenary pantographs mounted on top of the trams. Specialized automated cleaning stations are therefore set up for washing trams. Before entering the facility, the driver selects the washing program that includes several cleaning functions. Once selected, the door opens and the tram enters the cleaning facility. The facility offers side wash with stationary vertical side brushes, as well as swiveling horizontal brushes. Before leaving the facility, the train car is rinsed with recycled fresh and osmosis or deionized water. Besides cleaning, a few of these rail vehicles also have sophisticated de-icing equipment for winter conditions. The Intercity Express train in Germany, for instance, passes through a specially designed 623-foot-long de-icing tunnel. A total of 40 nozzle blocks have been mounted along the length of the track on either side of the rails that spray a high stream of warm water upwards from the nozzles. Being primarily a safety measure, this also has a positive effect on the train's aerodynamic resistance and speed. The combination of technology and innovative engineering has truly led to the development of advanced techniques in the field of cleaning and maintaining large vehicles, both at sea as well as on land. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.